Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and are these really the worst miniatures I've ever painted? Well, probably not, um, but I'll tell you why they might be and why I'm perfectly okay with that. So let's get into it. So here we have Epic Pike and Shot by Warlord Games. Now, are they really my worst ever painted miniatures? Well, like I said, probably not. But there is a caveat. <laughs> I'm going to talk about why. I think they could be. They're probably not. They could be. Uh, but why I'm perfectly happy and okay with the way they are. Now, earlier in the year, I made a, a video um, about how I learned to love Epic American Civil War. Uh, and I do, I, I've really enjoyed painting that range. It's taking a bit of a back burner at the moment for other projects, but something I do intend to, to complete. Now, Push of Pike, which is the Pike and Shot version of Epic, was released in around about April of this year. And I was really interested. I've, I've always wanted a, a game where I can play sort of English Civil War, 30 Years War, and have lots of figures. But I know in my heart it was never going to be at 28mm because I'm just not that fast of a painter. So this is the perfect scale for me. So I, I got the box and due to one thing or another I, I just put off, put off painting the figures. I, I didn't really open the box for a while. But I did and I painted a test strip and I was quite chuffed with them. Um, then I realised I'd actually spent a couple of hours <laughs> on, on this one strip. So doing the maths I realised that if I painted at that rate, uh, that standard, um, I would never have anything to show for my my endeavours. Nothing on the tabletop. So I decided to come up with uh, just a quick way of of um, of painting these. A bit of an experiment. Um, on the screen now, you'll see how they started life. Three stripes. That's right, three stripes. Um, and this was this was the starting point. And from there, it was just a case of adding a wash and then going in and adding the details, um, basing them, getting some flags on. And I actually flew through the regiment really pretty quickly. So what I thought I'd do is just show you what I've done, how these are different from my American Civil War epic and are they really my worst ever painted miniatures? Well, probably not given that I've been painting for 30 years. And some of the stuff I produced when I was a teenager was absolutely ghastly. Um, so I think these are definitely an improvement. But on my current stuff, are they my worst? Probably not. But uh, let's have a look anyway. Now, when my gaming buddy and I decided to get, in, get involved in um, Epic Pike and Shot, I thought the plan was originally going to be um, English Civil War. Um, he's he used to be in the Sealed Knot, um, very, very much a, an English Civil War um, buff, that's his thing. Um, but no, we, we both decided that let's have a bit of a change, let's go for uh, 30 Years War. And it's not, it's not a period I'm overly familiar with. Um, I've read a couple of um, articles and I've got a couple of books about it. Um, I'm still learning about it, um, but yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a surprise that he he, he went that route. Uh, so I've opted to to go for the the imperial side, and this is my first completed regiment. Now, the big question is: it or are they the worst miniatures I've ever painted? Well, probably not, but I'm going to tell you why I think they are and why it's possibly all in my mind. So this is the first base. That I completed. Let's get that to focus. Do, 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 do. Come on. There we go. And the base of the back, or the strip of the background, that was the first one I painted. I this was my test um, strip that I painted a couple of months back, and then just left it. Now I spent a good two, two and a half, three hours maybe painting this one strip, doing highlights and making sure all the faces were were we you know nicely painted and highlighted and then i sat down and i thought well that's not feasible is it i mean spending two to three hours on one strip and you're going to have multiple strips in an uh, in army if you want to play you know fairly big games so i thought right you've got to change your way of painting and i came up with this that's on the screen now it's three stripes of paint over over the over each um uh, each strip 
and after that it was just this is just blocking in the basic colors i gave it a really heavy wash and then went in picked up the details a few highlights and based it and yeah that's that's how i got to this point so the guys at the front yeah these were the ones these were the challenge because they weren't on the strip and they're not they're not they're not greatly painted there's there's mistakes they're not they're not well highlighted there's browns on blue um but the thing is you get you you miss about 50 percent more than 50 percent of the figure once they're based and are their boots painted no no they're not i i am not painting boots at this scale i've got much better things to do with my time uh, than paint boots on chaps this size I can just hide it with basic materials. Tactical Clump Foliage is the name of the game when I'm painting these. So that was the first one that I, I painted. And I'll be honest, I struggled getting through it with the, um, the, the, the pike at the front. I thought, nope, Steve, crack on, crack on. So then I completed the rest of the, the, um, the regiment. So this is the rest of the pike block. So these guys at the front have got um, breastplates and armor and the guys at the back haven't and i painted these in exactly the way that i mentioned so three stripes so red blue and brown and then just painted their block painted appropriately after a wash um and do, do they look bad not particularly um for me the biggest thing was it was a mental thing really i'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to painting and if you're showing miniatures on a, a channel or on social media, such as like Instagram or, or, or anything of that nature, you want them to be the best. You don't want mistakes. Uh, and these are absolutely riddled with mistakes. They're, they're not accurately painted. Um, they're painted quickly, not accurately. The browns, the, they, they seep onto the blue. Uh, of you know, the some haven't even got hair painted. Um, and again, no boots. Zero boots painted on this stand. <laughs> I'm never going to do it. And it's again it's mental and it's all about now sing along with me the three foot rule now what is the three foot rule and i'm going to mention it later on in the uh, in the video but from three feet away you're not going to notice whether you know the the, the guy fourth from the left has got his boots painted um and if, if you you can you notice that you're too close to my figures and uh, take a step back and so it, that was the biggest thing or the biggest problem for me was that 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 mindset there's going to be mistakes on these figures. It's the, there's no escaping. I mean, if you can, if you want to sit down and paint every one of these to an absolute 100% exquisite detail, you know, fair play, knock yourself out. Um, I don't have the, the 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 patience or the time to do that. So I've got a the biggest battle was realizing that not every stand or strip or person is going to be perfection. And once you sort of conquer that, it does get easier painting them. And I, I felt a bit better. Um, once I'd done that. So once these were painted and based, I was on a bit of a roll. So I started painting the rest of them. So I was painting the um, the musket wings next. Now these were a lot easier to paint than, than the pike. I think it's because there's a lot more raised area. Um, there's there's just a lot more to work with. Uh, so you've got the hats, you've got the stands, the muskets, the bandoliers, um, and some packs and swords, etc. Again, they're not, they're not neatly painted. As you can see, there's then they're just not neatly painted and I've, I've got to come to that I've got to come to the realization that these aren't it isn't going to be a neatly painted army but from three feet away they are going to look okay and I, I, I actually did enjoy painting these these were these were a lot of fun to paint and the last musket wing here again a lot more raised detail no painted boots because you know life's too short to paint boots at this scale um, but they're, they're, they're chock full of detail and really nice to paint and I like the colour scheme of Chosen um, and the basing works again it hides a myriad of <laughs> mistakes and, and painting sins but from three feet away that's the main thing it's going to look good from three feet away and that that is my, my aim when I'm painting these so that's what i've done so far so next is going to be a bit of a bit of a ramble about the the, the mindset of painting at the scale and the three foot rule
So the mystical phrase, the three foot rule, often bandied around by many a wargamer and painter and modeler. But what actually is the three foot rule? Well, very simply is, does it look okay from three feet away? If it does, you're golden, crack on. Um, that's a very, very um, simple way of putting it. But another way to look at it is this. So on the screen now, look at this lighthouse, okay? This lighthouse, it looks fine from, from, a, from a distance and you know there's going to be things up on there. That there's going to be loads of detail on that lighthouse. But do you need to see it from this distance? No, you, you, you really don't. You know it's there. But you don't, you don't need to see it at this distance. And the same applies to, to wargaming figures of any scale. Um, but specifically for me, at this scale, I mean, I, I know that these, these, these guys have got boots. I know they've got faces. And I know they've got hats and bandoliers. And probably nostril hair as well. But you don't need to paint it. It doesn't need to be painted. And from, from three feet away, when you've got multiple units on the table, nobody is, is going gonna, is gonna to notice. And... It's the overall effect of the unit. Now, I think I mentioned this in the English Civil War, uh, not the English Civil War, the American Civil War epic video that I did, where it's not about the figure or the strip or the base. It's the overall regiment look, which then leads in to the overall look of the army. So I'm I'm really looking forward to see, painting much more of these and seeing the army grow and getting it on the tabletop uh, with the banners and the basing and... The, the 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 blocks of pike it's gonna it's gonna look spectacular and i'm looking forward to that so it's all about that mindset when it comes to painting that you don't need to see every last bit of detail to enjoy painting these or to get them on the tabletop um and that's that's my approach and for me as i mentioned earlier as someone that is a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to painting or displaying painted figures that's been my biggest struggle so far is to is to get, accept the realization that the, there's going to be mistakes on these figures there really are going to be mistakes but that's perfectly okay and that's why i said earlier on are these the worst painted miniatures i've ever had uh, or ever painted no probably not there's mistakes on them but i'm perfectly happy with that and i'm perfectly content to continue painting in this manner and what i'm going to do is again plot this journey and see this army grow in a series of videos and also teach myself about the 30 years war because it's from what i've read so far really interesting um and i know there's lots of people in the community who who gain the 30 years war so i'll be tapping into their knowledge and experience uh when it comes to painting and fighting battles with the 30 years war well hope you found that video enjoyable or interesting or helpful um if you've got any comments about this or war gaming in general uh, just pop them down below and i'll certainly respond to all comments and questions but um Thanks for watching, do take care, may you dice roll well, and I'll catch you all in the next video. So, bye bye for now.